You're listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, where you get valuable information you just can't find anywhere else. To thrive in today's trying times, you need the Financial Survival Network now more than ever. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and get your free newsletter and gift. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz, and today's 225 22. Months almost over. Wars are, well, the first war is off and running. What's coming next? Remember, we've been talking about war cycles with a number of guests, but right now, Eric Haddock is here with us to discuss the current war cycle and where he thinks it's heading. And you can always find him at Inside, that's I-N-S-I-I-D-E track dot com. Eric, uh, welcome back. So we've been talking about this war cycle for years now. And you told uh, you told us that uh, wait until 2021 for the war cycles to kick in. So what's uh, what's going on here? Well, as, as we've discussed uh, over the last few years, there is a, a really long term, broader cycle that has been underpinning uh, all of my analysis on these expected war cycles. And uh, as with any of my analysis, it's, it's synergy of multiple cycles kind of coming together and colliding that makes me take notice and, and gives me a higher confidence in, in some of these individuals cycles. But the one at the core of, of this discussion and why I kept saying wait until late 2021 and into 2022 is uh, a combination where there's an 80-year cycle and there's a very consistent 21-year cycle. But the 80-year cycle is the one that has really intrigued me. It's, it's a pair of the 40-year cycles that I often refer to a cycle that uh, has been recognized for millennia and often is associated with a period of testing or preparation. And two of those, anytime I've got multiples of a particular cycle, that has its own significance. But this 80-year cycle has timed wars and conflicts uh, throughout Europe, throughout England, and then more recently in North America and the U.S. for uh, now uh, 700 plus years. And uh, I, I detail these, I kind of reiterate this from time to time in my newsletter, but in, in February I went through it again. But you can go back to uh, 1301, 1302 in the beginning of the Ottoman Empire and the Byzantine raids and, and one of the first major battles and uh, really the, the Ottoman Empire establishing itself for what would be a 600 year uh, empire took place at 1301, 1302. And from that point forward, every 80 years, you get major transformational battles, wars across Europe, uh, some of them directly related to uh, conflict with the Ottoman Empire, some of them more um, related to <clears throat> Western Europe. But, you know, I, I again, I detailed this in, in 1381, a major battle in England in 1461, 80 years later, the largest and bloodiest battle ever fought on English soil. 80 years after that was the um, siege of Buda led to 150 years of Ottoman control over Hungary. But the significance of that is that that was the Western extreme of the Ottoman Empire. So from a landmass perspective, from an expansionary perspective, it was kind of the pinnacle, even though the uh, the empire uh, continued beyond that. But uh, 80 years later was the final phases of the Dutch revolt. And uh, not surprisingly, that was a total 80 year war reinforcing that whole uh, concept. And 80 years after that, 1701, the War of Spanish Succession. 80 years after that was the culmination of America's Revolutionary War in 1781 to 83 were the final years of that. 80 years following that, 
uh, America was embroiled in in the Civil War that began in 1861 and lasted through 1865. 80 years after that was U.S. entry into World War II in late 1941, and that lasted until 1945. So just a very consistent 80-year cycle, and and that was one of the reasons why I explained why I thought late 2021 to um, and then stretching into 2025 would see uh, a new phase of war cycles um, in in Europe in with with U.S. involvement. Uh, and I also think that you're going to see a front in Asia in the coming years, too. Um, and I don't know whether that's China with the South China Sea, China with Taiwan, uh, I'm sure that they're watching very closely to see how the West reacts to this current um, battle with Russia and the Ukraine. But not only that 80 year cycle, there's a there's a 21 year cycle. It's a multiple of a seven year cycle that I even discussed back in 1999 and 2000 in my Inside Track newsletter when I was warning readers that August through October of 2001 would be the recurrence of a new cycle of wars and battles. And sure enough, the events of 9-11 perfectly fulfilled that. But that was the uh, really the trigger for America involvement in the Iraq and Afghanistan wars. But 21 years prior to that, 1980, was the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan at the same time the Iran-Iraq war started. And and so you've got some connections and some similarities between the 1980 and 2001 and 21 years prior to 1980 was 1959 Vietnam. It was really when the North committed to a war in the South. Uh, 21 years earlier, 1938 was World War Two and the Holocaust. And that was really one of the most pivotal years leading into that and, and escalating World War Two. 21 years before that, 1917 was World War One, And you can go back a couple more 21-year cycles prior is the Crimean War, which certainly has a strong link to what's going on right now between Russia and the Ukraine. So you had, it wasn't just one of these major cycles. This time it was the convergence and the collision of many of them coming into play which is why I thought that late 2021, early 2022 would see kind of the proverbial first shot in this phase of war cycles. And just as a a little aside there, it was interesting to me how precise this was that, you know, if you go back 80 years ago, uh, America's involvement in World War II uh, was triggered on December 7th, 1941. And America's involvement in this latest conflict, you can really tie to December 7th of 2021, where after a month of uh, first the U.S. and then Ukraine reporting on tens of thousands of Russian troops massing on their border, December 7th was when Biden came out and threatened Putin against invading, threw down the gauntlet and uh you know, at least on a rhetorical standpoint, um, was the the trigger for U.S. involvement. Now that you know, that may just be an economic involvement at this phase, but uh, history rhymes; it doesn't repeat. So, exactly eighty years apart, you have these trigger events that bring the U.S. into these conflicts. Hmm. All right. Well, it looks like the cycles are uh, are acting the way that. That you had anticipated. Uh, so let's go to gold. You were describing a scenario where you expected it to rally from uh, mid-November and then December and then late February. Uh, how does that fit in with the war cycles? And what do you think gold is going to do going forward? Well, I think that this is kind of some early phases of a a new advance in gold. But when I described in my newsletter why late September, early October should be a major bottom in gold, silver and the uh, the mining share indexes, I laid out a scenario based on weekly cycles, monthly cycles 
And some specific timing indicators. I always use price action as the ultimate filter. The cycles just give me kind of a backdrop. But that scenario was for an initial rally into mid-November, then some consolidation with a secondary low in mid-December, and then uh, a rally into January, but ultimately a more accelerated and intensified rally into late February. Uh, I've explained since uh, since November why I thought that the week of February 21st to 25th would be the culmination of this this phase of gold surge. And you often get I describe it as the 90 10 rule of cycles, uh, but it's really just describing a parabolic or blow off move. You often get the majority of a price move at the very tail end of a specific cycle. And that's what gold was setting up to do here as well, which is why I was looking for this February surge that I explained why it should peak during this current week, February 21st to the 25th. Um, And sure enough, the fundamental events kicked in. And that's often when you get the uh, the very late coming uh, novice investors who wake up, hear the news event, and suddenly run and buy gold, well, that's often the time when the savvy investors and traders are taking some profits because they've been in gold for several months leading up to this. It's those type of events that often create a top, not a new trend. And I think that this latest invasion is another perfect example of that. Uh, I have laid out for my readers a couple future time frames when I think that gold could see something similar, uh, whether they whether those surges will be tied to geopolitical conflict or something else. It's not always the same thing. Uh, I, I don't know, but I think there are a couple other key time frames uh, looking forward when similar opportunities will arise in gold. But uh, not only did it did gold fulfill those cycles and, and run right up into the middle of this week, but the price target all along was to see it spike above 1920. And and more recently, my indicators were saying 1950 to 1960 would be uh, probably the extreme on the upside for this phase. And we had gold spike up to about 1975, 76, depending on the um, uh, the contract that you're watching, since I do a lot of my analysis on the futures markets, uh, fulfilling those price objectives as well. So I think we're at a phase where we're setting a an intermediate top. Um, and I think that there is a specific time frame and some price levels that will be forming where another buy signal will probably form in gold in the coming weeks. But for right now, I think that we've seen the culmination of this particular phase of the uptrend. All right. So but uh, but you're thinking uh, how, how much further down the road uh going to wait? And is gold going to stay close to where it is? Is it going to make some more lows? Where do you think it's heading? Don't just survive. Thrive. The Financial Survival Network. American Eagle Gold is focused on exploring for a world-class gold deposit on its flagship property, Golden Gate, located in the Cortez Trend, next door to Barrick Gold and Newmont Mining's Gold Rush and Cortez Mine. They have produced over 27 million ounces of gold. The company plans to drill and advance its relatively unexplored property and continue to focus on acquiring and advancing gold projects in the area. Vice President of Exploration Mark Bradley was at the helm of the team that discovered and defined Gold Rush and has spent the better part of 30 years working on the Cortez Trend. American Eagle trades under the symbol AEG on the TSX Venture. For more information and to sign up for notifications, go to AmericanEagleGold.ca. This is the Financial Survival Network, the information you need to thrive now more than ever. Well, I, I don't think it will uh, violate the lows that it that it set last year. It has really been setting a series of ascending lows um, really since March of last year. Uh, gold was kind of the leader here. Then in late September, early October, you had silver and, and the mining shares set final lows, even as gold held its lows, that kind of divergence is very important. And then in mid-December, when gold and silver were setting the stage for secondary lows, you had palladium and platinum spike to final lows. So that type of 
divergence. Um, it's it's the inverse of what I often describe in in stock market tops uh, between different sectors and indexes that I compare to an old wooden roller coaster where each car in that in that train of a roller coaster hits the peak at a different time. Each one crosses the summit and starts to turn down at a different time. And it's not until the final car crosses that summit that then you get a a more accelerated move to the downside. While the flip, the inverse of that is the same for many of these bottoms that you get uh, markets within a specific sector, in this case, precious metals, bottoming at different times. And it's not until those final ones bottom that you open up the, the floodgates for more accelerated moves to the outside, to the upside. And that's what you've seen in, in precious metals in the last couple months. And, and I do think one of the, one of the key levels for gold is, uh, right around 1840, 1850. So that's a critical level of support that should hold if we're going to, uh, make it back to new highs sooner rather than later. That support really will have a, a strong influence on timing of future expectations, uh, not as much price. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. And palladium definitely uh, fulfilled your downside projections. It's been heading higher lately. Obviously, yeah, that you know, Russia is a leading uh, producer of of uh, palladium. Yeah, and I, I was explaining back in December and January to my readers why there were some very decisive downside objectives in it met in palladium. In fact, if you look at just comparing uh, price moves, its drop in into December of last year uh, precisely matched the decline it had back in early 2020. A lot of times markets will give this kind of similar waves where decline, the magnitude of one decline matches the magnitude of another when it's in a particular phase of a cycle and a wave. Palladium fulfilled that. It came down to some key levels of support and was showing that it was ready to start a new bull market along with platinum. Um, and at the time, you know, the, the war drums were only beginning to rumble with Russia and Ukraine. But these markets and, and savvy investors are aware of these things and start preparing uh, in the early phases. And and so that's when you saw this new bull market start to take hold. And I think that it it ha- definitely has more upside looking out uh, over the coming months and year. All right. So there's more upside coming. Uh, so much for the EV revolution. It's going to get rid of the need for all that, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's an interesting uh, observation there. Uh, so what other markets should we be looking at right now? or uh, volatility, et cetera? Well, I think that you have, you know, across the board, obviously you've had um, a lot of markets react to this on a, on a very uh, Russia, Ukraine specific um, factor or or whatever. Uh, One of the commodities that been discussing over the last two years is is wheat and uh, my analysis showed that we should see a a new bull market in wheat in 2021 and 2022 and that one of the uh, primary upside targets where an intermediate top would be most likely was at 950 and uh, you know, a month and a half two months ago we were down in the high seven dollars per bushel of wheat and we was showing that it had it had bottomed and should see an accelerated move up into early March. Uh, it was kind of you know, really going nowhere uh, into early February. And then all of a sudden started to come to life as as the uh, latest phases of this conflict started to materialize. And just in the last uh, couple of days, it surged, was up limit one day, went right to 950 where a, a top has been expected. And and that's probably going to be uh, an intermediate peak there, too. Again, you get a lot of this buy the rumor, sell the news type of stuff, or as I put it, buy the anticipation, sell the realization that 
that the markets are always anticipating things in advance. And that's why it's so dangerous for traders to turn on the news and react to a news event in a correlated way. You know, something like Russia, Ukraine, all of a sudden buying gold, buying wheat. It's too late for that. The, the, the markets have been anticipating that. Uh, if it's on the news, then everybody possible already knows about it. So unless you've got some great inside connection where you can get into that market before everyone else, uh, you're going to be buying the top and selling the bottom. And that's what I think is is one of the things that's so critical about this type of analysis and about technical analysis in, in general. It often anticipates fundamental events ahead. And it's because many of those fundamental events are are casting shadows before. They are already giving hints of their development. You, you go back to early November when Russia started amassing troops on the Ukraine border. The savvy investors were already starting to play for that type of event. And so you get four months of price movement in anticipation in gold, in wheat, in the stock market selling off. And when the actual event occurs, unless it is so much beyond the the, the scope of, of what was suspected or feared, um, there's not much more to drive the market. And so you get these reactions, you get these tops in gold, bottoms in the stock market. And, and in this case, a, to- a likely top in, in commodities like wheat. So I think that this is the time when the markets are going to uh, have some reactive moves against what um, normal correlations would would hint at. Um, and that's where traders have to be very agile and and very specific with what they're doing and what their objectives are. All right. Well, that's been uh, really enlightening, Eric. Uh- Glad you stopped by, especially in light of all the market action that's been going on in the markets we discussed over the past couple of days. It's been a little mystifying. Uh, Yesterday morning, gold was up uh, $80 an ounce, and uh, then it came crashing down. Makes one wonder uh, what the markets are thinking. But in any event, uh, the markets will do what they do. Eric, where should we find you on the Internet? Where do you go to? Uh, the best place is InsideTrackTrading.com. As you mentioned, it's got that extra I in the middle, I-N-S-I-I-D-E, TrackTrading.com. I also post a lot of um, 40-year rela- 40-year cycle related analysis, and this 80-year cycle of war fits into that uh, criteria. Uh, on 40YearCycle.com, that's the number 40 and the words year cycle, 40YearCycle.com. So there are the two best places, but to, to contact us, to get some uh, samples of our work. In fact, I'd be happy to uh, send out a copy of the couple of publications I mentioned, my February Inside Track that details these war cycles um, and, and a couple other related ones to anyone that wants to contact us through our website. And the best place is that InsideTrackTrading.com website. All right. to get in touch with us. Okay, excellent. And if you got a question for Eric, shoot me an email to kl at kerrylutz.com. We'll get you an answer. And don't forget, sign up for your free newsletter at financialsurvivalnetwork.com. Eric, always a pleasure. We'll talk to you again real soon. Oh, thanks very much, Kerry. Looking forward to it. Thanks for listening to Kerry Lutz's Financial Survival Network, your solution to today's trying times. For the latest, go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever.